Hi and welcome back to another video. As you can see and probably also here, we are back in the data center. We are back visiting Hetzner because they invited us to see some of their new creations, new servers, uh, especially for AM5. And they also have some special AM5 boards, which we want to check out in today's video. We will start here at Hetzner's test lab. And today the focus is going to be some kind of like custom hardware because I spotted a very interesting custom mainboard they made for their AX52 server, which is a server that contains the Ryzen 7 1000 CPUs. Here we have the ASUS Pro WS 665 Ace, which is a board you will not find if you Google for it because it's a custom made Hetzner product. And obviously, the biggest difference to any kind of like consumer or other workstation board is that this entire segment, so not only the socket, but this entire segment is rotated by 90 degrees. And you will see that, like, if you pay attention to maybe a Strix board, it's basically the same, so same kind of VRM layout. Everything is like in the same orientation, but it's rotated by 90 degrees. And usually, at least to me personally, I think this is quite interesting because if you just talk about the CPU pins and the CPU pin orientation, typically you have the socket pins in this area for the memory. And in like this area, you have it for the power supply. And especially in the bottom area, you will find the pins for PCIe. And now that you can see that PCIe has to be routed all the way here, this gets quite interesting. One more thing that you typically don't find on consumer boards is also two Oculink ports that allow the connection to SSDs. Now, if you flip the board around and pay attention to the PCIe lanes, you will see that they basically go all the way through your VRM. So you have like capacitors on the front here, and you can see the PCIe lanes going through, the, through there. And that's something that at least from my expectation would cause quite a bit of trouble. One thing you have to keep in mind is that this board is PCIe 4.0 only. The reason for that is pretty simple. Right now, they don't need it for their customers because you don't have any 5.0 drives available. And even if, it might just not make sense for a normal consumer because these are pretty much a consumer servers, the AX52. And even if the 5.0 SSD would be available, it might not be a requirement. And in that case, routing 4.0 lanes across a VRM is probably easier than 5.0 because it has less criteria on signal integrity. Also, I mean, obviously, they will try to keep the board as lean as possible, also as cheap as possible. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact numbers, but you can guess that they will have to, like, minimum order several thousand, maybe several 10,000 pieces. And then it obviously also makes sense that you, like, keep the cost down as low as possible. But you might ask yourself the question, why are they even going with a 90 degree rotated socket? This is an AM4 board. It's a previous gen, so AX41 Hetzner server. And uh, we already covered this in a previous video. But what I wanted to highlight is that this is also like a cut down board version. So it's like they're saving all kind of stuff they don't need to make it as cheap as possible. And even if they go for like the cheapest board possible, they still go for a debug LED. And shout out to Steve for his recent video like discussing this topic. And I totally agree with him that no matter how much you cut down your board, this is the feature you have to keep. Because if you run into any kind of trouble, you want to be able to troubleshoot, to debug it. And this is a feature that has to be available even on the cheaper boards. But now going back to the 90 degree rotated socket and the reason for that, and that's mainly cooling and cooling capability. That would be kind of like an, a normal version of their cooler for AM4 or AM5. So you have your like four mounting holes and because they have a different like way of cooling, we will check that on the server in a second, but you would have the air going through the cooler in this direction. And with the rotated socket, they can use like the length version of the cooler. And even though like surface wise, this is identical, right? Because like if you rotate it by 90 degree or not, it's, it's still the same amount of surface. Still, they discovered that if they use these kind of coolers where the, like the air has to travel a longer distance, they can achieve like two to three degree Celsius lower temperatures, which then makes sense. Now, this is one of the AX Ryzen 7000 Hetzner based servers. And typically they are covered with these shrouds for like airflow reasons. And if we take this off, it's also something we covered in the previous video. Now you can see the reason why the socket is rotated. And also this is like a hot topic we had underneath like one of the, the previous videos and previous advertisement spots where we covered DayX52. 
Like in these beauty shots, they had some sleeved cables, which is obviously not used in the server. And we read a lot of comments about this. That's like, like unnecessary and it's like blocking the airflow and, and everything. And obviously that's not the case. Like as you can see, the cable pretty much goes above like the airflow channel and obviously does not block the airflow. I mean, they're validating all of this and testing and yeah. But that's something I wanted to discuss because I saw several comments underneath uh, some of these like advertisement spots. But like going back to the airflow, this design is just a lot better for them and the way they build their servers for cooling reasons. Because all, also if you would have a normal board with normal orientation of the socket, the memory sticks would sit here and they would block and cover the airflow of like the outtake fan. And with this orientation, the airflow is going to be much better on the memory and is going to be much better on the CPU. We are now running the AX52 server. And um, what I want to point out is that the conditions we have in this lab are exactly the same as in the rest of the data center, except for that we don't have like additional push for the airflow, because typically if you would have your like cold aisle, then it would like support the airflow from this direction, but we have the Outtek fan on here and uh, we'll now try to run some benchmarks. Quick look into CPU-C, we have the Ryzen 7 7700 and the memory is running at 4800 C40, which is just according to spec and it's 64 gigabyte of capacity. Now quickly running Cinebench R20 multi because as you can see in hardware info, the CPU is capped at max 90 watt power consumption. And at this power consumption, we see like max 86 degrees Celsius. Compared to an unlimited retail CPU, so a Ryzen 7700 without any power cap, you are losing about five to 6% in performance. But you have to keep in mind for like this rest amount of performance, if you want to have that, then the CPU will easily consume like 20 to 30% more power. And that's why they limit, the, especially the Ryzen CPUs at the very efficient level of about 90 Watt, which makes absolute sense because sustainability is a big thing here. And they have to make sure that the CPUs are running as efficient as possible. And also, I mean, from my point of view, it makes absolute sense to lose like 5% performance, but have 20 to 30% less power draw. One more thing you have to keep in mind, that's something an Hetzler employee just pointed out to us, is that you have to keep in mind if, if you want to have this like rest of performance and you pay for like 20 to 30% more power draw, it's significantly going to increase the cost of the server. And then you have to pay more. And the AX52, which is like a budget server with the 7700, if you pay a few euros more per month, may, might not be worth it. This AX52 server also exists with a different mainboard. So it's the same like component selection, same memory, same CPU, same cooler, but it's a different board. It's an ASRock REC. We took this board as an example so you can take a closer look at it. Obviously, the server is not using direct die, but I just wanted to showcase that Hetzner is also testing things like this, like just the custom cooling solutions to maybe improve thermals even further. Apart from that, it's pretty similar to the Asus board that it has a 90 degree rotated socket, but the VRMs are at a different position because on the Asus board, the VRM is like right here in L shape and here it's in front, it has less faces, but at the same time it's using or it's making more use of the airflow because the airflow is going this direction and then it's going to be better for cooling. Also, because the VRM is not in this location, they can route the PCIe lanes on the top lane directly to these slots. So much for this quick video about, uh, yeah, some interesting stuff that Hetzner is doing, some custom boards with custom cooling solutions, at least they're testing. Obviously, I want to point this out again, you will not find direct eye in the retail server, but it's something they're also looking into to improve thermals further. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye-bye.